Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam-pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. I either have or will cover other parts of this franchise and this video either is or will be linked below. I'm not going to restate here what I did or will say in the other video. These videos get long enough as it is. Married with Children Season 4 Thoughts and while I suspend the timer I'm not sure how different the lighting exactly looks but it might change although it shouldn't get dark at all basically excuse me it's being a little difficult there we go there has been some really recent very sudden thunder so I've gotten kind of anxious about watching the sky before when whenever the computer's on which tends to be the case when I'm at home so I have what's it called post the the curtains are open so that I can check and that of course lets some light in where I usually use the 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 do they do we just call them lamps so anyway yeah and they're they're still on so if it does get dark and I still continue filming then you'll the lighting should still be will still be good although it might change slightly from where it is right now anyway starting with the intro. Now, yeah, this is the season where Steve left and Marcy remained single for the remainder of the season. And this was the first season where the audience would applaud when a major character would enter a scene for the first time in the episode, first time that Bug speaks. And the It's a Wonderful Life. I'll, I'll talk about that when I when I get there. I love that one. And and Ted McGinley, you know, appears in that one as well as later as Jefferson and Darcy. The endings continue to be great. Hot off the grill. This is ranked seven, the seventh best, and it actually is that good. Now, and and you know, the briefly on the, the intro. There's movement in Al's intro shot, which is, it's, yeah, much, much better. And on my discs, there's still bad knockoff music. And I think I forgot to note under specific episodes, but there are episodes in this season where clearly Steve does not appear, but he's still in some of, but he might still be in that episode's, you know, intro. I wouldn't necessarily mention that if not for the fact that other ones that he's not in, he doesn't appear in the intro, so I don't know what the, some kind of contractual thing, or, I don't know. Now. Because it's Labor Day, not Leech Day, that's Christmas. It's not Parasite Day, that's Mother's Day. And, yeah, I'm sorry, the, the rape jokes in this episode are really gross. There's no excuse. And the explanation doesn't do much, just gross. It's Al Bundy. It's like being at school. 
No, the difference between here and school is that you'll be out of here when you're 18. Nothing that says natural ingredients. Tomorrow, we spend the day together. Today, get out. I don't like you, I just want to have sex with you. As a man, you should understand. Oh god, what a charade. Oh god. That's such a great takedown of the... Because he's just gotten done saying what they say on so many of these 60s sitcoms. You know, oh, tomorrow is... You know, it's, it's such a great day. We spend the day together as a family. And this, you know, in part, it's this going, you know, really far to... Yeah, to really, to really mock it. But it is also like... Yeah, a lot of families don't like spending time together, particularly. Where am I going to get ashes? Then I guess you're out of here, huh? Kiss the cook, kill the wife. That's so bad. Let's cook. I think that might be the first instance of that, although, you know, the normal thing is let's rock. I don't know, he might have said it in one of the previous seasons. And Buck's on the ground. Not quite yet. Poor Seagal, she can sing better than that. Would mind fixing up this salmon? No problem, and he tosses it. It's, it's like that King of the Hill one, you know. Then we ask them politely, yet firmly, to leave. No, I meant about your burgers. I love Kel's face, but, you know, the Marcy's once again talking about something horrible that's happened in her life. You know, in this case, it's recent. And, you know, she mentions, oh, it's sitting on the, you know, up there. And Kel's face is like, <laughs> just, I love caveman bug. <laughs> this is like, I mean, it's, it's, I'm eating, but there's also like this kind of, yeah, really, really like savage, like kind of, quality to it. It's not just, can can this please wait? No, it's just mm, eating. <laughs> you know, th this is no time for talking, woman. There's red meat to eat. <laughs> and Steve loves it, you know, eats, she, she's going around whispering. And also, you know, as soon as he, as soon as she whispers it to him, <laughs> And then she tells it to, to Steve, and he's like, yes, awesome. <laughs> Take a bite, you'll like it. Um, Marcy, shut up, ghoul. Alrighty. <laughs> These are the best burgers this side of heaven. <laughs> and right next to Alan Mars, Peg strangling Kel, Bud and Steve are throwing up. It's just, yeah. Great season opener, great ending joke, great, great all the way. Last time I watched Meet the Parents, which is a decade or more ago, I quite liked it. And I'm going to let you finish, but this episode had a way better Ashes to Fire joke. But yeah, the really, each of these season openers have been pretty strong. You know, season one you have the pilot, which is just great episode all around. Season two, I want to say, is the one where with the, the axe murder. I forget season three's, but I'm pretty sure it's also quite strong. I'm, I'll try to notice if they keep being that good. Dead men don't do aerobics. And this is only ranked 173. It's, it's not the best. And they're just eating chocolate and tea. You know, replace Jim Jupiter with Ricky Martin, 
and the reactions to him are like those of teenagers. You know, girls loved him, guys called him gay, as if that mattered, and that it was the end of that discussion. Just, I distinctly remember that. Just, yeah, so stupid. Want to see Mikado tonight? <laughs> Who's he fighting? Two different Americas. Go away, dinner's in two weeks. <laughs> but it's not Christmas yet. You're spoiling them. Then you should heal quickly. And she pushes Marcy out the door. Peg hadn't expected to exercise. It's so much fun to, yeah. And Zagal was in good shape to do all those exercises, even if she's supposed to look bad. Okay, I think you're warmed up. Let's get started. All of that was just warm up. <laughs> See, that's what it feels like when you're not, like, I mean, you know, for, for me, exercise is like on and off. Sometimes I really get into it, sometimes not. You know, but yeah, if you're like, I don't want to exercise, then warm up feels like it takes forever. And she broke him. He's eating bonbons too. And he has a heart attack on air. You've been as good as dead for years. And Buck runs off. How do, you, how do we get our vitamins and rocks? I will not be responsible for the death or enjoyment of any member of this family. Shut up or get out. And they start to leave. And she hit Buck. That was just an accident. The ice pick just slipped out of her hand. Thirteen times. Dad, you think you're the boss, of the boss in this house? Do something. I, I would have thought that Peg got enough of healthy living in that first season episode. I think that was the second episode. Thinergy, or what it was called. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yep, forgot again. Healthy people are like dinosaurs. They're not fit to survive. That one? No, that one. Well, any one of them. Anything that's good enough for the cockroach is good enough for my family. And the text right before the end credits roll. Which again, you know, yeah, this is basically a creed against all the, you know, the sitcoms, the PSAs, all these that are like urging regular Americans to eat more healthy. And really, even back when this aired, that was much less likely than just, you know, because it doesn't, it, it's less accessible, it's more expensive, it just doesn't taste as good, and just, yeah. Buck saves the day. <coughs> and this is only ranked 211. Yeah, that's probably about right, yeah. Which what? And the band's called Oozing Meat. Oh, Daddy, can I have a working hard indeed? And I'm afraid you won't be going. <laughs> He's spelling at me again. <laughs> I'm a coming back. And shaking the bushes for flushing. It's so nice without Al here. Of course she wasn't talking about the kids. To loan mommy money. No, I have to save my money for... And the hamster wheel start. <laughs> I love joyful Steve. Sing, dance, smile, a combination, whatever. That's why it's off the hook. It's not him, is it? <laughs> we string it up like a cheat. And even Steve joins in the sexist how do women get worse bit. He's dying, Victor. And Steve tries chanting, come on, Buck, too. 
You know what you have to do. Yes, Mommy. The usual 50%? Let's make it 60, just to teach you a lesson. Kelly, can't your dates just honk before him? I trained him. Uh-oh. <coughs> mm, excuse me. Tooth or consequences? This is rank 65. I'd say it's it belongs there. Ah, home sweet hell. Oh god, the idiot will be home soon. Hi, idiot. <laughs> For a second you thought she wouldn't say it to his face. We're gonna put a poll. And Kel legitimately thinks they're putting a poll in her head. And they check the kid's teeth. <laughs> Tetanus shots. Oh, I hate that little pin. Al, I want to go to the dentist. <laughs> Twice a month? I mean, year. <laughs> I love Marcy checking Al's teeth. And then a little later when Kel does it. Teeth don't hurt, as Swayze said. I love Al beating up Kel's dates. And Kel kept having it on the show. <laughs> Who cares? Ice cold beer. Oh, Al, you, uh... Well, you'll find out. So, yes, I'm definitely afraid of the dentist. I blame Brian Usna. They got Al a dentist appointment at 2.30, you know, tooth hurdy. The audience didn't laugh, so I, yeah. I, I do feel like they could have put, like, a pause there, like, I got you a dentist appointment. 2.30, you know. Two years ago, so I was eight. Honey, daddy doesn't have long to live. <laughs> He's basically verbally petting her head as he's backing away, realizing how little's going on up there. And Bud was with a date too. <laughs> like I'm gonna believe that. I could have had a girl here. I got no time for your jokes right now, Bud. <laughs> Tough. Everybody hates going to the dentist, even maybe especially grown-ups. No one wants their dentist to make so many jokes. Or the present or the future, but... I'm so mad I'm shaking. Maybe you should put that down. Oh, look at all the oon. He ain't much, but he's mine. She's not quite worked out how to work it. And it's ranked 188, which I'd say is about right. As if it's his, as if his teeth aren't as good as mine. No wonder they think it's Al she's cheating with, except the 24-inch Sony thing. Look, it's the Pope. I said no camera. Get lost, and he moves a few steps. I meant people older than Daddy. Are there any? <laughs> We're almost a family here. And Bud and Kel try to convince Peg which stepdad to go with. Then why'd you get us all excited? What are you throwing the grass on me for? Because <laughs> I don't want to be a rutnik. And they're sniffing it. <laughs> don't call me a TV in my own home. You're a TV. Toaster. And it's Marcy cooking, of course. 
I wonder if that would work on pancakes. A real man, not no little boy. I don't want a real man. I want Al. I love Steve reading the report. <laughs> Excuse me. I love the taking out of the hairdresser. Very, you know, hitman. You know, 47. Okay, that's wind. It's not rain or thunder. So Peck cut the hair right off her head of the cheating young woman just to get revenge. Yeah, that's... Oh, sorry, misread my my notes. I forgot, but yeah, it's been it's, you know almost three weeks. So, so pay cut the hair right off her head of the cheating young woman just to get revenge. And they end the up in the same position they started it. Fair exchange. It's ranked 17, yeah. It's one of the best ones. Their whole pizza last night. Like real people. Let me see. Well, god darn it, it's me. What you do for this family. And they laugh. Glasses forever. Kelly's school books, and he blows dust off them. My English book, I ain't got no use for that. Word. What do you think the garage is for? I know, I know. It's for the car. To her brain, they're talking to her like a small child, asking simplistic questions for her to eagerly answer. Like when I get an idea? And I'll give her a hand. Hey, over here! And he shuts the door and he showers from the cold. Good friend Jack sent Mila. And good physical comedy with Loder given. Her facial expressions were great. And, you know, this is one of the first roles that Americans saw her in at all. Will we be going into a classroom today? <laughs> the Beatles of the 20th century. Maybe you'll get one. Or 20. A toast to the French. Would that make it French toast? A bud. And they're too, too busy eating to talk to her, except bud. Yep, it's the founders. You clearly have thought of this, Steve. I'm sorry we had to be the one to tell you this. And they laugh. We're eating. The hell you say. His name isn't important. Wait a second. I took you to the homecoming dance. Well, his name isn't important. You're hiding it really well. And now Mila is using the confident struts in so many of her roles, when appropriate. And that's making fun of Cal. What, what was it she said? Le Grand Geek? I'll kill you. I really will. This is not a joke. Dead. <laughs> I suppose. I'll beg someone to go out with you. Wow. And yeah, Kel's reaction is quite appropriate. You can copy off me. She even flunked French. She must be the stupidest girl in the world. Well, I'm the stupidest girl in America. <laughs> She's so proud of that. And it's, again, like, it, she, you know, oh, she's getting attention for being stupid. I'm stupid. 
And yeah, Miljovic was underage at the time, and you know, Applegate was actually, I guess, by this point, she was of age, I think, but you know, in the first season, just second, I think, yeah. You know, a lot of the other sexualized girls in the show, it's an uncomfortable aspect. And if the show wasn't so incredibly funny and groundbreaking, it'd be a deal breaker. Desperately Seeking Miss October. And this is ranked 119, which I agree with. Kelly Bundy. I wasn't copying off his paper, I swear. Tabloid route. At least someone's heard of Spuds McKenzie. This is why he joined Hydra. Look at this, my little girl's reading. <laughs> like she's a seven year old or something. Where would I get an egg this time of day? What's this word? A. Oh, just like the letter. <laughs> what do I sell here? I'm not leaving. I'm not either. This is exactly what John Nash was talking about in the bar. I may not know I may not know the color of my wife's eyes. I may not know my children's birthdays. Look cool. Why don't you just tell them to levitate? My stable, my women, my life. This struggle is diminished today with the prevalence of internet porn. Well, Peg, you did specify a little smile. I cannot steal from my children. They lock the doors. You don't know how to drive. You are no longer allowed to play with Steve. Enjoy. Aw, she made him a jigsaw puzzle. You really don't know, do you? I love Al's dad. Gray eyebrows and mustache. I guess for the studio audience, they had a stand-in, or they showed one of the two performances on, like, a screen or something. I thought you were alive. No, I really care about your wife and kids. Abe, Socrates, Mo, Larry, Curly. <laughs> she doesn't even know you're alive. Women are the single biggest problem facing the world today. Wow, that is incredibly misogynistic. I'm not saying they necessarily meant it, but it is still, wow. Well, Al Senior, if heaven is so great and women are so awful, why did you have to hide from the women? Why aren't women in a separate heaven? Oh, for the love of God, I'm giving him ideas. And he does the Duke stance talking to the kids. <laughs> you can't learn from me. And the sand runs out. Bud, no problems here, Dad. No, a Mercedes. <laughs> oh, lots. And that apparently really is Brandy Brand. And the ending is like Al made a wish to a genie for the Playboys back. Yeah, he got his wish, but you know, with really horrible. <laughs> yeah, horrible events had to happen for. 976 Shoe. This is ranked number one. I'm not sure I quite agree with that, but it is one of the best, and it's easy to see why it's voted as the best. Honestly, I like the Santa episode better than this episode, and there are also some later season ones where the, you know, where the material gets wackier that I'd say I like better than this. Waiting for a jumper to make up his mind. My husband alone. Is there any reward for turning him in? I love his face. Don't forget, if we paid taxes, still not a bad idea. 
Yeah, they came home. How good could it have been? But the joke's on them. I swallowed about 50 cents worth. Ed McMahon said, I, says I may owe him a million dollars, ten million dollars. What are the odds it's actually you? Mm, that's okay then. I hang up after a minute and call back. Wow. Oh, I was hoping you'd say no. No, kids? The hick slammed the papers right now. Not you, I was talking about some other hick. I gotta go, the hick's staring at me. Hey Steve, I'm glad I caught you. I need a loan. See, I'm gonna buy my own toll line. Yeah, it'll be great. People will pay two bucks a pop just to talk to me. Now I know what you're thinking, that this is just another sex line. Well, it isn't. This is something I know something about. No, you need 50. Sign right here. And I'll sh I voted for you. What an idiot. One or two. 40. You really believe in the loan? With my heart and soul, sir. Did you put your job on the line for it? No, sir. Then I will. If this Bundy doesn't come through, you're fired. And, you know, on the, on the goose, they point out, and it's a plot hole that, you know, he makes the bank loan to Al, but tells him to fill out the paperwork later. And seconds later, the bank president comes over to complain to Steve about his poor judgment in making that loan. Al didn't even complete the paperwork. The bank president would not even have known the loan had been made, let alone that it would be bad. And number one, it's a sitcom trope and very much sitcom logic. Number two, it's Al Bundy. The stink of failure is unmistakable and can be detected, detected from very far away. Not only does Al Bundy go into the bank and obviously whatever he does is going to fail. No, of course he's going to get a loan that will fail just miserably. It's, yeah. Dr. Shu. And he finally picks it up just too, just too soon. Oh, the acting on the ground, yeah. Can I help? Shoe betcha. A little bit differently now. And no one will call for a million years. All I had to do was sign over the house. Good honey, I was getting sick of living indoors. Don't you pull that coma stuff with me, Stephen. And he sinks down. You don't blame the chimp. You do if you're the NRA. None today, tomorrow, twice as many. This is your fault, you should have to go. I love the ads. My daughter, I was wondering when Cousin It did before the two, yes, two movies. Even books ashamed. Please call. You want someone dead? I'll kill them. <laughs> How many? Oh, a hundred. Then I can retire. Now that would be impossible, wouldn't it, kids? Could say they lost a hundred thousand dollars. And we close on a list of jobs that earn people more money than the shoe salesman. Oh, what a feeling. This is ranked 114, which, yeah, pretty much agree with. And he's pushing the car. Hi, Daddy. I saw you pushing the car. Doesn't it work? Oh, sure it does, honey. It was just such a nice day. I didn't want to waste it sitting in the car like those other jerks on the expressway. Oh, and she's, she clearly believes him. Of course it doesn't work. Honey, if you saw Daddy pushing the car, why didn't you come out and give me a hand? Well, it looked pretty boring. I mean, you were going so slow on everything. You know, a person could get a heart attack pushing a car in this heat. And you gotta think about Mom. 
What would she do if you, she lost both of us? If you kicked, it's okay, she can always marry again, but if I went... Kelly, honey, forget about it, okay? Just give old dad a chance to push his spleen with Mabel. Hey, dad, we saw you pushing the old car. Me and some of my friends thought you'd never make it up the hill. Did you ever think about helping old dad? And this heat? You know, you kids have been so great. Why don't you hop in this car and I'll push the two of you to the ice cream parlor? Thanks, Dad. Oh, and push it fast so we'll look cool. Wow. We already got ice cream and we're home. I didn't get any. Man, this is stupid. I know, I know I've said that I don't like, I don't want to, re I don't like and I don't want to, I know I shouldn't like and I don't want to repeat the sexist jokes, but these jokes would be funny if it was a guy being the stupid, you know, it's not like when I watched Unhappily Ever After, I was like, why isn't it a girl being that stupid about, what was his name, not, not Rory, right, was that the younger kid? I forget the name, but yeah, you know, the teenage kid in that one, who's not necessarily quite Kelly Bundy level stupid, but really stupid. Batman okay, Daddy. Sounds like your mother. Sounds like your mother. Sound like one of my dates. Awful big box. And Kel details how little Al has. No, you're the vegetables of my suffering. And Al just gets nothing out of the car salesman. And the homeless guy gives Al money. Mr. and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Whiteman. And they got a deal. And all the kid got to see. And the kid doesn't even want the car. Buy me one, please. I'd be proud to call you daddy. And he has to push that car too. And another car he has to push. This time it's green. I can almost pull this one. It's way too far for daddy to walk without a car. Now get in the car, kids. All right, everybody, let's hold it right there. Now, how long have I known you guys? What, about two, three hundred years? In that time, I've learned to do without several things. A yacht, a summer home, love, respect, food. I can accept that. But I will not live one more day without a car that runs. So, no more advice. I will go out on my own and find my own used car lot. And if I come home tonight, God willing, it will be behind the wheel of something that goes room. Al Bundy pushes no more. Now, get out of my car. And he does return in one that drives. One mile per year? Al, it's your old car. Obviously. And him slamming the door makes it open, thus proving it's the same. But at least now it drives again. So it's probably like he just paid way too much to have them fix it in a garage instead of, you know, because he sold it and then bought it back. Although sometimes the money they charge at garages is, you know, at the zoo. <coughs> Excuse me. This is ranked 75 and yeah, it's that good. Bugs and dirt. Okay, okay, I don't know Give me give me some credit. I left it on the table for you and Buck ate it. And he imagines Buck as a turkey. Very gold fever. Excuse me. Go I Can I just wing you now? Marcy still demoted? Consequences a sitcom, one episode to the next. Intriguing. Pretty deep in here. 
in my lunch six minutes. Does anyone care that I haven't eaten in days? It was just a show. It's okay. My husband is a screw up, but enough about me. How was your day, Steve? And he keeps talking her right behind him. I love the bar scene. And Al tries to win the money away from her. And she leaves Steve to rot. I love that this episode changes the status quo for Steve and in part thus Marcy. Before Steve was almost the rich guy, now he's lazy and doesn't want a job. He's a male pig. Pre Jefferson. It's a Bundiful Life Part One. And this is ranked ninety-five. I'd say I'd I'd, I'd rank it at least fifty better. This two-parter is among my favorite episodes of the show. Christmas episodes, Christmas episodes of any show ever, seasonal event episodes ever, comedy episodes ever, show episodes ever. Now, excuse me, I have to scroll past. Here we go. I love the Bundy rendition of Twelve Days of Christmas. Okay, who's got my wedding ring? I love Al's advice to Marcy. See? We know you're in there. And Bud's appeal. Daddy's not stupid enough. I love the bank Christmas party, every single little detail about it. And the Santa group beating. You still love me though, right? And assault rifle fire. And he tied up the kids. And the Christmas adventure story he tells them. And great cliffhanger. That's a young Thomas Ian Nick Nicholas as Bobby. It's, it's again, you know, a lot of these where it's a young male actor playing, you know, so someone who would later become really famous. You know, once you know that it's them, you can totally see, you can recognize the, the traits. You know, I, I believe this is the only young Thomas Ian Nicholas role I've seen. You know, when I think of him, well, I used to think of him as, you know, from American Pie, but now I, I think of him from, from, you know, the rules of attraction. Yeah. And there's so many amazing quotes from this one. And, yeah, the following are out of order. Was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, no food was astir, not even a mouse. Stocking were, stockings were hung round Dad's neck like a tie, along with a note that says, "Presents or die." Children were plotting all night in their beds, while the wife's constant whining was splitting his head. But Daddy had money this year in the bank. When they then they closed up early. Now Dad's in the tank, and all of a sudden Santa appeared. A sneer on his face, booze in his beard. Santa, I said as he laughed merrily, you do so much others, do something for me. Bundy, he said, you only sell shoes. Your son is a sneak, your daughter's a flimps. Ho, ho, Santa said, should I mention your wife? Her hair is like an A-bomb, her nails like a knife. And he climbs up the chimney, that fat piece of dome. He moved me two times, he stuck out his tongue. And I heard him exclaim, Exclaim as he broke wind with glee, You're married with children, you'll never be free. You be quiet or I'll send you to the bathroom dungeon like little Bobby. And it's clever too, because as it turns out, that dungeon couldn't hold, no, no dungeon can hold little Bobby. Now who wants to hear about the red-nosed Grinch who stole Uncle Al's life? Oh, honey, I know what would make you feel better, but I'll never leave you, not in a million years. So, Al, what's the family, what's the family for, plan for Christmas this year? Five bowls of flushing, four rides of throbbing, three nose hairs waving, two children starving, one untouched wife. I guess that's what they mean when they say chestnuts roasting on an open fire. I know I already mentioned it, but I still want to quote it.
Christmas is not the time for rest. That's what anniversaries are for. I hate Christmas. The mall is full of nothing but women and children. All they hear is, I want this. Get me this. I have to have this. And then there's the children. And they're all by my store because they stuck, they stuck them all Santa right outside, ringing a stupid bell. As if you need a bell to notice a 300 pound alcoholic in a red suit. Ho, 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 all day long. So, nice as can be, I go outside, ask him to shut the hell up. He takes a swing at me. So I lay a hook into his fat belly, and he goes down. Beard comes off, all the kids start crying, and I'm the bad guy. Daddy? What is it, pumpkin? Yeah, I just got a call from the doctor. I'm dying. I have Bolivia. The doctor says it's terminus. How long do you have, pumpkin? Until Christmas Day, and the only known cure is a good present. One from the $225-$275 price range. Why can't you and Mother get along, Marcy? The woman hangs her coat on me. Oh, Al, come unwrap your Christmas present. Where is it? It's me, you feeb. Ah, uh, Al, how do you expect me to get excited when you just rewrap the same old junk I didn't play with the, with the year before? It's a Bundaful Life Part 2. This is ranked 14. I think I'd rank it even higher. This is probably top 5 for me. And, you know, really, I, you know, if you haven't watched both parts and you just watch Part 1 and you then realize that Part 2 is so much higher rated, you're like, how could it possibly be? And then you watch the episode. Yeah. And... Gimme, gimme, gimme. Rotten in the state of Denver. Stupid enough. <laughs> then give us our presents. Up until six. And they just leave him. And only one of the lights work. If I was never born. And of course they have Nintendo in heaven. In fact, the Nintendos in heaven never age too much to turn back on. You rarely have to blow the cartridge. So anyway, lights work, and yeah, only a supernatural being could possibly make them all work at the same time, so that really does prove it. Ah, it's Harry Bud Bundy Potter. Oh, come on. I love McGinley in this as I love him as Jefferson. I also love Kinnison in this, and I'm really glad they didn't mind having McGinley come back. And that Kinnison didn't refuse them since he wasn't Al Bundy. And I'm so glad that it's O'Neill, not Kinnison, as Al Bundy. Although I can only base that on how Kinnison is in this episode. But yeah, just... I, I just don't see... Kinnison's shouting in this is so funny. And Al's... You know, Kinnison's shouting is like furious. Like, you know, where, where Al's shouting is like this succumbing to the, the weight of the misery on his shoulders, you know, there's a, there's a huge difference, and yeah, I just, I wouldn't have either of them in any other way, it, it, yeah. Whoa, Jablonski! I can't think of one damn reason. I can always rent love. Just a regular orange. And again, out of continuity quotes. Peg, it's me and my angel. She doesn't know you're there, Bundy. Just like when you're having sex. I want to be back with my family. Why? Look at them. They're happy. Not a care in the world. You think I'm going to let that happen after all the grief they put me through? I want to live. Bundy, 
Are you serious? It means I'm going to be an angel. I'm going to get my wings. I'm going to be a real angel. But first, I'm going to take a look at my ex-wife. You really didn't love her, did you? No, I just want to put a package of ding-dongs just out of reach of her pork pie fingers. And then as she oozes that thousand-pound bulk over to the table, lifts up three of her chins so she's able to put one of them in her mouth, I'm going to turn them into me. A twenty-year-old rotting corpse. How do you like that, Thelma? Daddy's home for Christmas. You pig, you slut. Take a bite of this shampoo. Ah. I'm sorry, that one was too good not to quote. But quick, what's more important, money or love? Money. You can always rent love. Oh, yeah, I guess I forgot to move that other one. Kelly, what's the color in orange? Right now? Off the top of my head? No multiple choice. I saved myself for marriage. Oh, come on. The football team retired Hergers. Well, gee, this was fun. What next? We go back in time to the night I should have been conceived to watch my father invent the condom. No more time travel for me. It gives me the runs. I'm sorry, Bendy. I failed you. I was sent down to Earth to show you a reason why I should live, but I can't think of one damn reason. I'll never get my wings now. You know what kind of woman you get up in heaven driving around the 78, 78 Pinto? The same kind of woman you get down here driving around the 78 Pinto. I knew it would pay to breastfeed you until you were nine. You need any money, dear? Oh no, I could never take any money from you. You and father have given me the best gift of all, the gift of life. Would you feel it if I kicked him? No, but for a little extra cash I'd give him your dog's face. Would you take an IOU? Not from you. I know you think you got it tough. Your wife doesn't respect you. Your kids think you're a failure. A good day for you is when you don't come across any new foot diseases. Believe me, I sympathize. But you think your life reeks? Take a whiff of mine, pal. And... Let's see. So, Al, I uh, notice you're not burdened down with any presents for your loving family. Are they uh, in the car? Well, no. Are they um, being delivered? No. Are they invisible? Well, you guys get to ask all the good questions. If it wants you to let me go first, I would have asked if they were being delivered. She's so upset at being asked about asking that question. I'm a guardian angel. As a matter of fact, I'm looking for uh, an Al Bundy. Do you know an Al Bundy? I'm Al Bundy. No! How could you stop playing the dead drum there for a minute? What kind of mess have you gotten me into? What have you done to me? <laughs> there, there, buddy. How about I go get my gun and shoot you with a nice silver bullet? Would you like that, buddy? You have to give me a minute with this one, Bundy. I thought I was there to save a human soul. What's it gonna take to convince you I'm your guardian angel? Fly around and play a harp? I'm an angel, not Tommy Toon. How about this? Make a wish, anything off the top of your head. Yeah, the Christmas line. Wow, it's amazing. I believe you. You're an angel. Hey, I want another wish. Aren't you supposed to get three? Hey, don't be a wish pig, Bundy. You want three wishes? Get a genie. Besides, anything that I can't get a receipt for comes out of my own pocket. Oh, come on. Just one more wish. Turn the lights back off and give me the hee-haw. <laughs> I've been sitting around waiting for them to die myself. Hello, heaven. I'm back. Could you open the gate and let me in? What do you mean, where's my badge? It's in my luggage. What? You lost my luggage? Oh no. No! <laughs> that pair of wings you want, you think you can make them out of that guy's kidney? Hey, don't worry about him, bunny. I checked into his future. By the time he's 60, his stomach is so ulcer ridden that he's... Oh, sorry. That's you. 
Oh, thanks a lot. You can turn water into wine, but you can't send me down here with any booze. Love ya. Ah. Oh, I see now. You're one of my wife's relatives. I never saw one standing upright before. No, much like a neutered dog, you don't get it, buddy. Read my lips. I'm your guardian angel. Hell, I gotta apologize. I just thought you were a nut. Well, I'll get my guitar, you go get Elvis, and the three of us will rock in the new year. You see, Bundy, if I help you find a reason to live, I get my wings. That means a lot up there, especially with the chicks. If I get my wings, I get certain privileges. Like, for example, as I get to pick up on the girls who died young. That's good for you, but what are you going to do for me? Show me that my life can only get worse? What are you going to do? Give me two more wives, three more kids, make me a White Sox fan? Hello, Mama. I'm home from college. College? She flunked lunch in high school. Hey, this is no sleigh ride for me either. Usually on Christmas, I'd be over at Moses' house, we'd be out by the pool, waiting for the new guy to jump off the diving board, and then mow parts of the water. Now that's Christmas. Yeah, but I sort of fell from grace. They caught me scalping tickets to a Jimi Hendrix concert. And here I am. How was your day? Oh, it was great. It's every day we met. I didn't finish baking the Christmas cookies but I, because I had a run-in with the shoe salesman at the mall today. I was only trying on shoes for a few hours and he barked at me to make up my mind. He was a rude, smelly, uneducated old man. Imagine a grown man selling shoes. <laughs> Gee, what a loser. But let's remember the old adage. I lamented that I had no shoes until I met the man who sold them to me. Al, get up. Peg, you know me? Well, of course I know you. Why do you, why do you think I didn't help you up? Wow. Let's see. Who'll stop the rain? And it's ranked 74. With all the Al falling, I'd rank it top 50 at least. I forgot to count, but I think he fell off the roof four or five times in 22 minutes. You don't have to be awake. And he turns off the alarm. It's dry on my side. You mean you'd switch? You'd, you mean you'd switch with me? That's what you are? Never forget. I love Al falling off the roof this and every episode where it happens. In this episode and in any other episode where it happens. You're not giving him back the cash. We didn't see him land. That have to be a total moron. Oh no, I'm not going up there. That's the problem with America. So Al. Kelly, you could button your own coat. Then they'd better not ask me. You mean Grandpa Hook? Circular souls were new back then. He didn't seem to call the doctor afterwards. Well, he'd have trouble holding the phone. You only had one finger left on the other hand. He may just be too stupid. Get the camera. We'll just hold it closer to the ground. What kind of moron are you? It's not how much you're making, it's how meaningful the work is too. Sure it is. How much? I guess you'll be wanting this back. And Al falls again. Oh cool, food! <laughs> Excellent physical comedy, Amanda. I mean, there's clearly no animal there. It's, it's, yeah, quite impressive. I'm dying. Al, you're tracking mud on the floor. Not all of it's mud. Some of it's colon. A wily e. Coyote mask? To have the right shoe. And the left one too, Dad. Thank you, sweetheart.
I love her face. She looks legitimately concerned as to him being stuck somewhere with only one shoe. Again, like in in her mind, she's like still in like kindergarten or something, you know, with and the teacher asks, you know, how many shoes do you need to leave the house in? And just two. You need you need two shoes. You need one for every foot. I got sunshine. <laughs> yeah, excuse me. Stupid modern washer makes noise. Button needs to be pressed five freaking times. Oh, right. How many more holes did you make? <laughs> I would have slammed the head first into the pan, you. Are you ready to give up? I am not. God, it smells like ham in here. And she gets water from the rain. Ah, he's got he got he's got the lip glasses. For you, twenty bucks. Does Axel ever wear a shirt? <laughs> I love Al with all the safety equipment. I've never really looked at you before. Again, a great job by Amanda. The constant blinking and the, yeah. Metal tools and a lightning storm. Well, who wants to tell him? And he falls again. Good job on a bottle episode, too. Oops. A quick clarification. I know you don't need to push the button five times. It's because the modern buttons, old buttons, you just press it and just, you know, these new ones have to figure out to press it just right. And yeah, did I already mention? Yeah, taxing problem. And this is ranked 189. Short skirt for math, Monday. Can't be all that old, it's still green. Yummy fuzzy cheese. Mm, breakfast cheese. And he just slams the door in his face. And he uses her mail to open the letter. I'm gonna be audited. <laughs> but just that, right? Well, yeah. Then to hell with it. <laughs> and the kids are already splitting up Al's stuff. Let's get him to jail first, then we'll think about him. Aha, bonbon. And he measures her hair. Five thousand. The birds use it as a bath. Peg, you should sell hair more often. He sold your hair. And Bud hands him a newspaper like it's a life preserver. I love the ladies, the hair talk. Our six eyes will beat us one. Applegate sucking her thumb is really, really funny. Look at it. She's not just got her thumb in her mouth passively. She is actively sucking on her thumb like it's consistently feeding her milk. I'm headed off to prison. Well, I got a problem. Aw, he was paying attention. Unless you cut your hair, I'll be going. No one wants you to go to prison. But we're talking about my hair. I've got finals coming up. And then we find out it was Buck's hair. Of course Peg wasn't going to give up her hair. What, for Al? Rock and roll girl.
and this is ranked 101. Yeah, that's that's about right. Car disabled? Check. How dare you make them grovel like this? It's not right to stomp on adults. And then she does it herself. If I double it, what the hell? I'll triple it. Go to the cats. And Bud gets rid of most of the competition, and Kelly does a little. First instance of Officer Dan. Peg, stop helping out with Dan. Do you think your underwear just stops dancing on its own? Okay, Al, but it's a good story. Oh, I thought you were telling one of yours. And Kel just keeps fiddling at the video. Take 53. TT Tokyo looks exhausted. The music isn't bad. There's gotta be something she can do. And smash cut. That's really, really creepy. I bet you'd look good on camera. You're not the first to tell me that. Very good, honey. You know, they should have used the second take. That's the one where you could tell he was on fire. No, he ruined that one. You could tell he was unconscious. And Buck eats the bird. You gotta know when to hold them. Part one. And this is ranked 230. Oh, I'd rank it at least 100 higher than that. And Steve's not in the opening, and this is where, you know, I thought, okay, we're past the episode he's in, other than the less, of course, like guest spots. That's nice, dear. I did have about five seconds of fun. Old empty. God, I hate man. Marcy's character sub summed up in four words. I love Steve's note. I mean, what are they good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Al charading, like acting out how he would hate to have Marcy stay, is actually a ton like how Sagal tries to warn Ritter in Eight Simple Rules when the girls come back from cheerleading tryouts. I wonder if it's an intentional reference. I mean, they did have a later episode on that show with Ed O'Neill playing Sagal's ex, so. Ah, an early criticism of Garfield. Yosemite. Death in Texas. I love Bud with the hat and jacket. And Bud's unbuttoning his shirt. Eh, rape joke with him jumping her. At least she gets to punch him. And not the last in this season of that. I I guess they stopped after this since then she then it's Jefferson she's with, I forget. And now Bud's the sibling blindly believing the other's clearly awful advice. I'm no electrician. Hey, let's not gloss over this TV thing. We'll see who the real park ranger is. In eight minutes, yep, they went to Vegas for sure. 19 inch diagonal, cause we're going to Vegas. Whoops. You gotta know when to fold them. Part two. Excuse me. There we go. That's better. And this one is ranked 221. I'd rank it at least 50 higher than that. We lost $5,000 a piece in 22 minutes. I've said it before, but poor Sakal, she can actually sing. You know, Eight Simple Rules had a 
brief bit in I guess season season two or three where they just had her sing for I don't know a minute or more. How about a hand on the woman on the piano? Raise your hand if you want us to leave. That is one of my favorite comedy quotes of mine from BLR in general of the last decade. Just beautifully, completely reverses the situation and turns the deeply dramatic scene into a hilarious one. And I love that movie too, so it's not, you know, it's, it's one of those cases where they did it so brilliantly that you can appreciate it even if you like the original. The look of a lynch mob. <laughs> and dude picks up Marcy like she's a standee. That's the one. I'm busy. Marcy learned quick. Buzz off. Three dollars. Boy, they don't pay these government agents anything. If he wakes up. got a gift. How can you stop it? Wow. Meanwhile, why don't they use it after this episode? It's clear at the end of this episode that she still has it. You know, they botched that one, but why don't they go back to Vegas after, you know, the next time they make some money. Oh, right. Al makes no money. Marry me. Damn the law. Is going to break the bank. That's the spirit, Marcy. Bundy, ah, Bundy, yummy all day. That's actually more subtle than some of the real Bond babe names. I can still barely believe they got away with Octo. Yeah. Bam, yeah. shaken, not stirred. What, you wanna end up in the hospital like Homer Simpson? And distress and distress. And a TV guide for later. And I like a woman with things on top. If I promise to be in bed by 10, can I go? 20,000 times. Al, do it for the TV. So biting above the waist is still fine. <laughs> Kelly's concern is touching. 86, 87, 100. Good night. Her with the lights behind her is legitimately badass. And they leave in the wheelchair, and down he goes. And according to IMDb, Big Bad Mama actually is a wrestler working under that alias, and this is one of the only non-wrestling focused fiction she guessed it in. And that's Tattoo Strongman from Batman Returns. I, I think he's the one, like, hassling, yeah, sexually assaulting Peg in the you know, Al Bund A, you know, fantasy. They, they don't really, they, I think they just call him Gambler. And there's, you know, there are other Gambler characters in the episode, but yeah. And IMDb Goof, Goofs points out, it's a plot hole that, you know, Peg maxed out the credit cards. Al didn't even have $12 cash to pay for a pizza. It shouldn't have been possible for him to buy airline tickets to Vegas. What goes around, comes around. This is ranked 20. Yeah, definitely one of the best. Lots of sexist jokes in this one. I love them, but I don't feel comfortable quoting them. Let's see. We're seeking great ball players. First clue, it wasn't for you. I am at the zenith of my stealthiness. Well, a good man is hard to find does mean the only requirement of being a good man is mastery of stealth. Now that is a speech about revenge that people can get behind. They really went the whole way there with the drugs are bad, like marriage is bad. It's PSA kind of thing, yeah. Bud has some excellent nicknames for Cal in this episode. In these kinds of things, the mic is never cut. No matter, you know, at least not for a very long time, 
when the speaker goes off script. I mean, with what he's saying, I don't know. It's, I suppose it's possible that the people in charge, like, agree with him. They, they're thinking back to their, you know, to the person they're married to. Thiessen is quite good in this. I honestly haven't much watched much of her work, and certainly not. To, what's it called? I can't even remember. Saved by the Bell. Wait, did I did I watch a little of it when I was a kid? Man, it made no impression. I th yeah, I guess I did watch some when I when I really think about. It. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't even name, like, the main characters. I couldn't even tell you if that was one of the kids' shows that the were annoyingly, what's it called, dubbed into Danish instead of just subtitled. I mean, I know that's the fact with Power Rangers. I can't believe they just admitted I watched Power Rangers. Well, it's not the first time I've admitted it. This is ranked, did I even mention the title? Peggy Turns 300. This is cute, double meaning there. It's ranked 104. I think I'd put it in the top 50. It's, I, I realize that it's, you know a lot of these would have to share spots for in order for all of the ones I've said be in the top 50. Yeah. I don't know. Where should we tell Dad you went? As soon as I find out when your birthdays are. Mine's in February. I'm an Aquarium. <laughs> and an empty one. It's your birthday? Kids, tonight, Mommy rides in the front seat. Rewind. And Kel takes a picture of herself. The pre-selfie, unintentional selfie. For you. And uh, some gummy bears with ice cream for me? You should never have gummy bears and ice cream at the same time. I don't know if, if any other country had it, but and I don't know if they still have it. I, I don't usually buy... When, when I buy ice cream, I buy like a, a thing of it, not, not like when you just open and, you know, it's just, uh, the price, yeah, makes more sense to... But we used to, for sure, have this... I think it was called Astronaut, and it's like supposed to be, oh, it's like a, you know, space shuttle or something. And the basic ice cream tasted fine, but then the thing they put as an astronaut inside was a gummy bear, and a frozen gummy bear is just, I mean, you pr either you swallow it whole, or you wait for it to thaw up, and even by the time it's thawed up, by which time you're done with this ice cream, the flavor's all gone. I don't know who got that idea. I think people who invent bad food tastes should have to taste it at least once themselves, then face a polygraph and say, do you really think that this tastes good? I mean, what's wrong with like putting like a little chocolate figurine in there? Chocolate's still good when it's, you know, the, the right kind of chocolate, still good when it's frozen. Mental note, contact the ice cream company later. Shut up, Peg. The conservative man summed up. Peg, I'm done. We can go home now. The conservative man further summed up. And Kel just keeps snapping pictures of herself. And Al tries to jinx her. Absolutely quiet. Absolute quiet. And Elle's jumping makes, you know, makes the last pin fall over. He seems happy. Winner. That's kind of sad and so funny. Bullfighter. Astronaut. That grin for the still. Peggy made a little lamb. Again, cute title, yeah. And this is ranked 145, I'd put it at least 25 higher. Kelly, honey, we had this tattoo talk when you were eight. Excuse me. Now look what you've done. 
you have to look through the old people's book again. I hate it when she sighs. Pose with your baby. A smile. Shoulders up here. Report for summer school. Guess whose pocket that went into? Kelly, well... Yeah, yeah, Mom, answer this one. Oh, well, it does matter. At least I'm not the stupidest. So, Sipe, you're kind of fifth smartest. Home economics. Duh. No, it couldn't be. She has to walk into mine. No, Susan, that would be wrong. The dog ate my homework. In unison, nice. Jello? Oh no. Crowned rack of lamb? That escalated quickly. Where am I gonna get hot water this time of night? Just use cold, it comes right out of the faucet. Great, now you tell her. And Buck speaks awesome, and he's already snarking at their stupidity. I am so happy this wasn't a one-off joke, which I can imagine starting out as. Certainly, the Chewbacca suit Buck was, you know, always going to be a one-off joke. But And really, in this season, it's the only time he, he speaks. And in this one, it's only that he's, yeah, he really is smarter than, yeah. And he's like, it's it's that kind of, like, he's really, like, this is kind of what they did with Bud later on. He's... He's so frustrated being stuck, surrounded by these incredibly stupid people. You know, later on, they also make him, like, horny, sometimes really stupid, hungry, and such. You know, it, for, for this one-off joke, which, again, it was originally undoubtedly intended to be, of course, it's just the one personality trait, but I'm, I'm really glad that they didn't later make him only that. I, I, I love Buck once he starts speaking. And having his own adventures, just, yeah. But at least I have a high school diploma. No school for you tomorrow. One of the first mentions of Bud liking getting his education. Oh no. Is there anything Marcy can't make sexual? And the cigarette? Man, Kel is slow, in more ways than one. And Peg's like, where's all this smoke coming from? It's real impressive that after that, she still managed to make the rack of lamb look that good. And according to Al, at least... Well, I guess he... he it's edible, at least. Yeah, me too. And Al's moved to tea. Kel just doesn't get it. Like, she's standing there and, like, Jello. She She's not like, Jello, wasn't that mine? She's just, you know, oh, very nice, uh, Miss Wanker. And, yeah, and she walks, oh, she, here's my car. Crowned rack of lamb. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I'm going to go to school this summer. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I do feel like Miss Byer could have been a lot funnier. They clearly were going for some laughs with her with the me and my cats line. Why didn't Kel try my dad ate my homework? They use the dog line, you know, two times three, depending on how you want to count them. Rain girl. And it's ranked 97. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It's that good. And that's how Al has to deal with bills. Cha cha cha. <laughs> and Bud throws the frisbee to Al, not only Buck, but he makes him jump. It's that school place. They give the good assignments to the awake students. Men will want you to do, and it's work, of course. She brought the coffee. <laughs> he should have been more specific. 
in you know today that joke doesn't work at all because nobody anymore asks for coffee. It's always you know, it's, yeah, it has to be some complicated Starbucks thing. Like soy hazelnut decaf latte, and I only know that description because it's in a Weird Al song. I don't drink coffee. I get my kicks elsewhere, and my caffeine from cola. Scola. I get my kicks from life when I'm down. Look, I made it cloudy up, way up in the pointy states. <laughs> Again, like a child. You're in a workplace. You're supposed to be. Wow. Like, I've, you know, people get fired for less, you know, less in common, less childish behavior in a workplace. Mom, Dad, I just got a job for $1,000 a week. Come and brown nose with us. I should have, you're all doing, already doing such a good job. Pretty decent impersonation of Al Bicycle. Right, Weather Bunny? Back to you, Bill. <laughs> Don't try this at home. Kelly making more in a day than you made in the 80s. Purchase some of her bath water. Ew, ew, ew. Ew, 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 ew. Okay, I'll move on. The legend seemed to work better with you dead. I sold her a lifetime pass yesterday. I am sorry I am not allowed to reveal tomorrow's weather until tomorrow because it's confidential information. Selling my bath water. Oh. Yeah, like I'm gonna keep that for five years. Uh huh. They can him like a tuna. The one in the skirt. And you always will be, honey. My sister's college education. What happened to my life? My youth. As spoken by tons of major adult characters on this show. And she shuts the door right in Marcy's face. What's left to say, Mama Walton? Everybody except me. Daddy, give Daddy a moment, a second here. All right, high school is for dummies. I wanted to pull you out of the seventh grade, but your mother in the county wouldn't let me. And it goes wrong, as fame for a young and not yet educated so frequently does. Can't you sell shoes and rob Kelly at the same time? Shut up or you won't get to live with my baby and me. Kelly, you don't even have to ask. Peg, take the boy and the dog and get out of here. <laughs> but, Buck, what's the difference? We sure can, if you're paying, as Al loves to say. Honey, for a quarter meal a year, I'd make Bundy kebabs out of you and your father. 17 years ago, wouldn't that mean she was 13 or 14 in season one? Unless they don't age one year per season. In reality, she's from 1971, so 15 or 16 when the first season aired. He won the inter-office pool on how many people died in that train wreck in Peru. Way to go, Jim. I think there was a reason he didn't want to admit that on air, Kel. Chicago. There's a Strom coming to us? What's a Strom? Even with context clues, she can't, like, I mean, this is a very sp Honey, what do you think? What do you think it might be? Like they did with Mr. Ed? Winds are up to 30 muffs. Strom cluds. Good stunt with the car. He's just a little concerned for you. Concerned for your safety. Come on in. Again, I would be laughing at that joke if it was Bud who was about to be beaten brutally with a baseball bat. And it's not as if he doesn't threaten Bud with violence frequently as well.
Anyway, the agony of defeat. This is ranked 209. Maybe, yeah. Vertigo. That must have been so fun to play for the foot models, especially the one that's like constantly like I think it's to I guess to to Al's right on on the but on the left side of the screen just to, yeah. And she's got the huge happy smiles ogling her own huge feet. I mean I wish she was giving us twenty five bucks a week so you could have some too. Kelly, are you sure this is okay? Last time I was here, your dad swung me around the house by my earring. That's just because she touched his remote control. They'll go down the drain in the shower. Yeah, clearly Kelly is the only painfully stupid bunny child. Still don't like the rape jokes they make with Bud Marcy. And she stumbles into the couch. And via flashback voiceover, the first explanation for how Al ended up a shoe salesman. And on the trivia page for on IMDb, they point out that in Modern Family, I want to say it's called, I haven't watched a single episode. It's possible that I will at some point. They actually, he actually does own his own corporation or something like that. So it's, so it did eventually come true, like she said, you know, as... He pours her another drink. A shower? In the middle of the week? Al, you don't even know where the soap is. One, two, C, and she bumps into the clock. The dream was a premonition, and pegs a foot long. Yard sale. There we go. It's only ranked 210. I'd place it 50, maybe 75 higher than that, at least. Just the ones stamped final noticed. This month, we're doing the ones personally delivered by the sheriff. So she went shopping. I'm sorry, Al. All right, then. An idiot? Hey, I'm going to do it. I said one day. Just put the rest in the storage bin. I know, but what do you have behind your back? Rest, honey. Unlike me, the boar's head. I have to be more specific usually when you're saying that thing, John, about that. Once every couple of months, I do. They must be selling parkas in hell right now. Hopefully your dad can afford one. Is he sighted? Well, you heard her say she wants to hurt him. Al looks so miserable as he hears the tricks she uses during sex. We Danes do have them sexy dames. Oh, help me. <laughs> That's what we all say when Marcy starts a story with when I was a little girl, or any other story. People think they're reading a real bargain. Wake up screaming. Five hundred dollars, you say? I love the entire, the physical comedy there with like, he's putting her arms around and, and she like, looks up gently. It's, it's like that time in, I, I think it's a fairly early episode of Two and a Half Men, where Charlie, like, touches, I can't believe I can't remember her name, but the, the you know, Al's first ex, you know, and, and she, like, you know, he, he puts just, you know, just, just gently, like, and, and it is, I mean, it is a sign of affection, but she just immediately, like, touches the hand and looks like it's, like, she hasn't been touched lovingly in, like, years, as, as if, you know, not saying she actually hadn't, but just, yeah. And again, I'd, I'd be laughing if it was a man, too. Let's see. Yeah, maybe I should. It's it's starting to look like it's starting to sound like an excuse, not an explanation. Let's see. Make it a quarter or something. 
from the four corners of the block, not the world, of course. Your second pair of underwear, thumbtacks in the street, sometimes he is not a complete moron. Isn't that you talking? Is this not, in fact, an ex-parrot? No, my daddy says 25. Stick to your guns, Kel. Just definitely don't want to end up getting shortchanged on a deal. Go change the newspaper under the dead parrot, honey. Winky is waiting. Now I just want to be like him. Oh boy, he's talking dad dog scrolling again. Oh god. Good boy. <laughs> the head idiot. A Bundy never wins, but a Bundy never quits. I love their alternative slogans. And I love Al's face when Buck growls at being petted. Welcome to Bundyland. We've got each other. By me. I love this ending. However, I do feel like it's an abrupt ending. Like, don't get me wrong, it was set up. One of the first things in the episode is her buying useless crap. And they just had her say, it's like it's calling out to me. So, yeah. And, and then it's literally calling out to her. And also being something obviously useless. But the episode was kind of going and then suddenly it ends. It's just not as well paced as others. It kind of reminds me of the, the Freaky Friday episode of Eight Simple Rules. Again, just, you know, moving along very nicely. But then it just kind of... That episode, I, I tend to say that, you know, at, there at the end, okay, we're, we've, we're out of jokes. Let's just stop. You know, let's just end the episode. It's not, you know... You know, comparatively, the, the episode where they just build and build, you know, you've got the, I guess he's like, a, he's some kind of police, you know, it, people keep calling the house, and a person quickly gets to the, the phone and answers, and then claims it's a telemarketer, and such, you know, that episode is great. I, I might at some point do eight simple rules, because even, even seasons two and three do have a, Occasional episodes like that, and season one is quite good. You know, R.I.P. John Ritter, you were a treasure. Adjustment Bureau game ideas. Let's see. So I just rewatched the Adjustment Bureau since I'm going to watch excuse me, Blade Runner 2049. I want to rewatch anything Philip K. Dick I could find. And I thought of a bunch of details for the, the possible game adaptation. I rewatched my old video on and I realized I barely gave any details in that one. And I did come up with new things in th this time thinking about it. I figure single player and multiplayer. And in single player, you're either one of the bureau members and it's like, you know, the other are the AI control, or you're the human and you're playing by your, you know, and you don't get help from, yeah. And then in multiplayer, it would be one human versus, let's say, two to eight bureau agents with the match adjusting for how many there are. And the game should have randomization a la payday. You don't know what obstacle there will be along the way, although the start and end locations and the core goal remain the same. Perhaps the human should have to fight off some of those black clan teams from the film. You know, it, it would certainly... I, th I think it could help keep it from getting otherwise maybe possibly a little repetitive. And no, I do not intend to review Payday. I, I have played the first one a bunch and or a little. And I played the second one when there was that free weekend and now I own the second one because it was free to, to get for the brief time. I'm not saying I'll never play them again, but I almost definitely won't do videos on them. I just do not know enough about that kind of, you know, gameplay. I've, I, yeah, but yeah, you know, the the bureau members would have some would have like a recharge players would have a recharging meter. I'd say it should have a percentage display as well. And it would be called ripples. And every time they do something non-human, so not like running, not 
opening or closing a door just regularly, it costs some of that, and if they were fully run out, the human character wins. They can raise a tiny bit of floor like they do to trip Norris in the empty warehouse. They can take out phones, one or numerous. Causing a car crash costs a lot of ripples and in general can rarely be done. There can be car chases, but the bureau members can only use the shortcut doors, not cars. They can quickly move around the map via the shortcut doors, but they can never move too far away from the human character. They can call up a full map display on RTS where the human can't see anything human eyes can't. And there are a number of NPCs and no ripple actions can be done in their sight line. The human would have a wallet with a certain amount of money. Money can be spent on cab fare, including telling the driver to ignore traffic laws, paying an NPC to block the path of a bureau member, to block a door or the like, and the wallet has a limit number, limited number of credit cards which can be each be used to jimmy open a single door. And They can also be given to an NPC to get an even greater favor from them. And you can pickpocket and sometimes there'll be a wallet in a room you can go through to get to your destination in a pants pocket in someone's home. But slowing down to pick that up obviously leaves you vulnerable. And as a human, it can be useful to avoid areas with a lot of doors, but you also can't move to, in too linear of a fashion. You know, doors or not, you will be caught. And yeah, I still, like I said, I, I love the movie and a lot of, you know, when, when I think this movie could make a really good game, I'm usually thinking this movie wasn't that good as a movie, but it would make a good game. In this, I do think the movie's great and the game would also be great, even though a lot of licensed games are not great. But I, if you make it, I will play it. That's a promise. And with that, I bid you adieu. I hope this was as entertaining to watch as it was to perform. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.